previously on News Channel. He fucked me with a toothbrush. Oh God. So he says he has something to tell me. And he basically says that he likes me and that um, my best friend told him like, told, oh yeah, told him that he should say something about it and that I will most likely say yes, which I didn't say yes, um, which is kind of like false hope for him and I felt bad. Um, and I told him, like, I feel bad, but this is not the time for me to, like, really go out with anybody. And I, I just really don't feel like it's a time I'm going through a lot in my life, which was true. Um, I was going through death in my family, and I just didn't feel like it, feel like dating anyone. I was really, really depressed, and I was already going through a lot of other things in life. So, first off, my phone was dying, and second of all... The space I had on my phone was non-existent. So, we had to delete. We had to move all these files to my computer and then delete them from my phone so I can continue recording because I was not done. I already put everything that I need for the next few steps on my desk while I was waiting. So we're back. We're here and we're back. What I was talking about was the incident that occurred. Um, when I, after my graduation thing, so he confesses, I tell him I don't like him like that, I'm sorry, I was going through a lot, I was going through a death in my family, and um, I didn't want to hurt his feelings because I really liked him like a friend, and I didn't want like to end a friendship over that, and so... I go back looking for my friend after that, my best friend, and hold on, I need, I need a breather. So my best friend, um, when I go to see her, she tells me, so what did you say? And I told her, I said no. And she's like, oh, um, well. I feel like you should have said yes because he really talks really highly of you. He cares about you. Like, it really shows that he's he likes you and like he seems like a really nice guy. And I'm here like, you went to my aunt's funeral. You know how heartbroken I was. You know I just came out of a very toxic relationship and you've asked me if I want to be in a relationship and I've told you no. I felt like, I just felt hurt. Like, I felt like I wasn't understood, you know? like. I told you how many times I don't want to be in a relationship and she doesn't understand that and she kept on asking about my sexuality and like she kept on saying like all these things that were very like not like very not I don't want to say homophobic but just not okay like and like I have nothing wrong against dudes like I like dudes like girl I understand but there was just certain things that didn't add up you know so I just felt like I I wasn't like she was not listening to anything I was saying and um I go home you know I try to ignore that and then she texts me I was just wondering if the guy was hot would you date him and at that moment, I was pissed. I wanted to slap her because how shallow can you be 
to think of appearance is the reason why I say no. When I told you the reason why I said no, first of all, was because I didn't like him like that. and But majority of it was I wasn't in the headspace for that. No matter how hot or how ugly the person is to you, I still wouldn't date them because I was not in the headspace for that. I went through two very traumatic things in my life and what you think is the reason? Ain't it, sis? I told her, please get out of my love life. And she took offense to that. And she spammed my phone all night. She said, oh, I'm not going to let you sleep, bitch. When I had a very important presentation the next morning for my uh, history, not my history, literature class. I was doing a play. And if I didn't do that, I would fail that class. And I wouldn't be able to graduate. What type of friend does that? So I went ahead and just muted her text, put my phone away and went to sleep. And the thing with my phone, it's always in silence. So no matter who calls me or texts me, I don't hear it. No matter what time it is. So I still fell asleep. When I woke up, I had more than, I had more than like, 60 to 100 messages. I don't remember, but it was more than 60 messages from her at voice messages and calls. I told her, we'll have this discussion after class because I have an important presentation that I told you yesterday that I had to do and I can't miss it for the world. Obviously, I passed that class and then we talked. I was on the line getting my metric card as usual. I should, I should actually go ahead and um, do my makeup. <laughs> but yeah, I was on the line. And I was... I texted her. I was like, okay. What's up? She said, listen to your voice messages. And I'm like, I don't want to listen to your voice messages. Because I know... I already heard one. And I already was over it. Um, So I listened to one. And I get mad. And I call her. I tell her... You're calling me a fake friend because I tell you not to get into my love life, right? So I guess I am a fake friend then. I was upset because you thought I was shallow enough to think about appearance when that ain't the reason. If you don't want to believe my reason, you, you don't have to. And I just, I was just done with the whole situation. We already had so many arguments, and I was already feeling like that, like, me retreating from her because I just didn't want to deal with the drama anymore. I didn't want to deal with the fights. I didn't want to deal with her getting mad over the most ridiculous thing. Relic uh, uh, ridiculous things. And I was getting annoyed with the fact that she would use her STI as a way to get out of problems. And um, her not seeing that whatever argument we have was ridiculous. She just kept on making arguments, kept on saying I wasn't her friend, kept on saying I was a fake friend. When I took her in a, to a vacation to a different country for a week, She's never been out of the country. And I invite her out of the week at last minute to go out to a different country. Yeah, I'm a fake friend. I, even though we had an argument the day before, I sat there and waited for them to pick you up when I could easily just took the train and go home by myself. I went ahead out of my way to do your makeup, your hair, help you in your dress, feed you. 
I was there when you had so many arguments with your boyfriend. I was there at your gynecologist appointment when your boyfriend wasn't there. I was with you every single time. I went with you when you were sick to the hospital. That was near your house when I can easily went to my own hospital, but no, I wanted to go with you. I was with you on that plane, sat next to you. Hold your hand because you had a fear of flying because you never done it before. I was there with you every step of the way. Every single problem you had, would, no matter who, what friend, I would, I would literally invite her near my school so we can go to the library to help her on her homework. And I'm a fake friend. I'm a fake friend because I told her the truth. I told her, please don't get into my love life. Don't try and make me have a boyfriend. Don't try to do this because it's, I'm not the one. I'm not going to be exactly like you. I get it. You don't understand because you only understand how you feel because that's generally what goes on with teenagers. You know, they don't understand what's going on, but at the same time, you were not, you were turning 19. You were 19 at the time. You were turning into a young adult and you had this mindset of fighting every single time when you were in the wrong and people were telling you the right thing. You said, you threatened me, you said, Oh, I'm going, if I see you on the street, I'm going to jump you. And then she texts me through another, one of her friend's phone, but she didn't even know that she took her phone to text me. And then she texts my mother. Oh, you have a horrible daughter. And it just escalated to a point that I didn't need to. She kept on using the excuse of, oh, you're stressing me out, you're a fake friend. You know that that stress can cause cancer. Like, why are you doing this? And I told her, I just don't wanna be friends anymore. And she's like, oh, you're a fake friend for that. Like, after all I've done for you. The amount of things I've done for you are greater than what you've done for me. What you did was remove me from a toxic friend and then you became the toxic friend. That's what you did. So I just said, okay, Well, I hope. Well, what did I say? I said something about. Well, I guess life can give you cancer then. No, no, that's not what I said. I said something along the lines of that, but I didn't mean it in that way. I know right away people are canceling me right now and in the video. What I meant was that you. I'm no longer going to be with you. You're the one that's causing yourself stress. You're the one that's causing yourself to have cancer because you, I, you're causing yourself stress. Basically, I says, well, I hope, well, something along the lines of that, but I didn't mean it in that way. And I understand how it was taking a different way. I didn't mean for her to think like, oh, she's wishing me cancer. 
I didn't mean it that way. I meant it as in the way of, I don't want to cause you stress anymore, so I'm leaving you, and I hope that you can cause yourself stress. And if that causes you cancer, have fun with that. Because I know that's not true. It's 1% of the people will get that, and it's absolutely rare for it to happen. So, if you want that, cause yourself stress. Be the one that causes that for yourself, because I'm not going to be the one. I'm not going to be the one that you blame everything on every single time we have an argument. Like, I just didn't want to be in that position anymore of being told all these horrible things because I'm human, right? Oh, frick, what did I do? That was a little too much. But I'm only human, and you're here blaming me, blaming everything on me. Everything I do wrong. If I don't go to your house, oh, you're a fake friend. You prefer everyone else. Like, you're a fake friend. Like, everything was ending up to me being a fake friend. So I just, I didn't want to be blamed for everything anymore. Like, at that point, I was just done. Like, I've brought her things. I brought her food. I've, like, I was with her for her birthday. And, like, whenever she was upset, I would try to make things better. And I would listen to her. And I would try to make her laugh. And I would, like be there for her when no one else was and the fact that I was called a fake friend when I knew I wasn't because the things I did for her no fake friend would do um and I just didn't want to deal with that anymore a few days later or weeks later um a friend that was her friend. Um, we met on the bus and I was like, oh, hey, how you doing? She was like, good. Um, and then the topic of this friend, my ex-best friend came up and she was like, well, this girl is now with another guy and she already had sexual relationships even though they just met. And now I understand what, like, what you went through because she's calling us fake friends and she's being very possessive and she keeps on saying that we're causing her cancer and stress. And I like, yep, that's what she did to me. And I didn't want to deal with that anymore. And she would make fights over the most random things. Yep. That's definitely what happened to me. And she was like, I was upset when you blocked me. And I told her, I blocked you not because I'm mad at you. Or I no longer don't want, I no longer want to be your friend. It was because... She went on your friend's account and sent me a really long message. And I recently checked my block messages and she said a whole bunch of stuff to me too. And I'll put them on the screen just so you can see everything she said to me. in those block messages because that's probably the only thing I have at this point um and yeah so um we no longer see each other obviously we know we definitely don't go to the same school um she doesn't go to my college um and she also doesn't know <laughs> what college I go to now because I graduated from my community college and I didn't tell her what college I'm going to now um, her friend, that is still my friend now, 
told me for the first days she would stalk my account on Facebook and she felt upset when she saw that I took her off as my best friend and she was like oh wow and I mean I did say that I'm no longer going to be your friend so I don't understand how you thought that was a lie I mean you did say a lot of bad things um to, that went in my mouth you did say a lot of bad things um to me and I don't want to put all that but I am going to put my blog messages so that I didn't respond to and you send a message to my mom which she ignored because my mom didn't like um her anyways so she was like yeah um she a little cray cray doing all that but um This lipstick, I don't know if it looks horrible. I really like it, but the way I applied it wasn't really the best way to apply this lipstick. I, I really butchered my lip line right now. I'll fix that. Okay, that's definitely a lot better than what I was doing. I'm going to do my eyebrows and the rest of my freckles off camera and I'll be back for the ending of this video. Okay, so I'm done. This is the final look. I look kind of dirty, so um, the freckles didn't help make me look better. It just made me look dirty, so we're not gonna, we're not gonna zoom in. You know, let's just not do that. Um, so yeah, this is the final look. My hair is a mess. My nails are a mess. So we're not looking at my other hand. I haven't done it yet. Um, but yeah, so hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I see you next time if you decide to stick around a little longer. Um, but yeah, so that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, it was really fun to talk about that. I mean, there was times where it wasn't that fun, but you know, it's good to reminisce in past drama and make a story time out of it. That's what I learned from YouTube. Are you proud of me? Anyways, I hope I see you in the next one. I love you so much. Ciao!